Thank you. I recall a Christmas season when I found myself pregnant with a child I knew I would never hold in my arms. I would look at the pictures of the Virgin Mary and I would think of her as another teenager pregnant and unmarried like myself and would think, well, at least she had the comfort of knowing that her baby's father was God. My memories were not so sweet as that. As a child of alcoholic parents from Philadelphia's inner city, I never really had a personal relationship with God until the Christmas season when that Christmas carol became so real to me when we sing, cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. And I received Christ into my heart and I felt, oh, I had a new beginning. And shortly after that, I would find myself in a very bad situation, raped and pregnant as a result of that rape. And I know that bad things happen to a lot of good people. At that time, I was very grateful there was not available to me a free clinic where I could have gone and gotten this thing taken care of. Any friend would have taken me and felt very noble to help me get rid of this thing I didn't deserve. I'm grateful that in those vulnerable moments, I had time to consider, time to search the scriptures and ask God. And when I read so many beautiful verses in the Bible, I became convinced that even though a couple may decide when to make love, God decides when to make life. And if that's true, <laughs> then there's no such thing as an illegitimate child. And I would decide for me abortion would be much too permanent an answer for my temporary problem. And I would go full term with the pregnancy. I would wind up in a county hospital, give birth to a baby girl whom I never saw or I never held, the missing piece of my life, I called her, the only child I would ever give birth to, although I didn't realize it. I am so glad that Jesus was born to save us all from Satan's power. When we were gone astray, oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Shortly after that, I would marry a wonderful man who had two precious daughters. And ironically, I would find myself sitting in an adoptions court, swearing and adopting his two daughters and wondering all the time, I wonder what happened to mine, knowing that for me, that was a closed chapter in my life. I had already come to realize, it seemed to me in life, that pain is inevitable. But misery is optional for people who honestly have a connection with God through Christ. And I never would imagine a few years ago I'd be sitting at home and I'd pick up my telephone and this strange voice on the end of the phone would say, Hello, you've never met me, but you're my mother. I've been looking for you for years. And here this voice on the end of the phone would want to tell me that you're a grandmother, she said. And the second reason for her wanting to seek me out and find me was even better than the first because in that first conversation, that child tried to do what she always dreamed someday she could do, and that was she tried to lead me to Christ on the telephone. <laughs> she quoted me some Bible verses, and I, I let her go for a while to see if she was any good. <laughs> And what a thrill it was to meet that girl for the first time, to have her walk through the door of a hotel room looking strikingly like me. First thing she ever said to me as she passed me a baby was, now go to your grandma. Oh. <laughs> and you know how moms are about kids. We can't resist showing you our kids. So I'd like you to welcome, please, my birth daughter, Julie Makama. <laughs> Julie? and a half years to find this lady and I'm glad that she's not the bag lady from LA that I thought she'd be <laughs> although I don't know if you're quite normal <laughs> but, <laughs> but I am so thankful that I not only had the opportunity to be loved and adopted by a special family but I also had the opportunity to know and grow to love my birth mother as well 
It is true I was conceived in rape, but I'm so grateful that I was not given the death penalty for the crime of my birth father. I know what's important to me is not how I began, but what I've become. But the most exciting thing about our story is that God wants to do the same thing for each of you that he's done for us, and that is turn the sorrows of life into joy.